we're going to visit a school on a journey with a head teacher on a mission. Her everyday journey may be familiar from Spaghetti Junction, Birmingham, to her school just a mile away. Her mission may be familiar to others, taking the school she inherited out of the Ofsted underachieving category. And she believes that effectively managing foundation stage literacy is key to her success. It is a fairly socially deprived area. Our free school meals are over 50%. We also have a highly mobile population. The community is, is culturally very diverse. Uh, we have just over 30% of the children white British heritage and just about 40% of the children who are of Pakistani heritage. Many of the children that we've admitted in the last year are newly arrived in the country and therefore at very early stages of speaking English. Erdington Hall has a 26 place nursery in both the morning and afternoon and two reception classes housed in a building that's rather past its sell-by date. Obviously when I arrived at the school, it was you know, with the drive to get the, the school removed from the underachieving category. In order to tackle underachievement, I felt it most appropriate to go to the very source of the school and to eradicate the underachievement at the source. The children were entering nursery well below average and they were leaving the foundation stage well below average. So we had to try and do something to close the gap at that stage of the school because once we got it right there, that then lays the foundations for every year after that. The school turned to the local authority for support and brought in an advanced skills teacher from a similar but higher achieving school to infuse the play-based approach into all its literacy experiences across the early years. And apart from needing a constant supply of cornflakes, it's evidently a success. I think the tendency is to batten down the hatches if they think it's not working um, and to become more formal. I think it's important to stand back, to take a deep breath and to look at why you think it's not working and then to make decisions. With all the planning and everything and all the activities that we've been doing, I think that's really helped a lot, even say with the outside yeah. activities mm, and that because yes. then all the speaking and listening that we do out there as well. Yeah. I think for a school that wanted to set out on this journey, they need to find practitioners that are prepared to learn about um, how important a vehicle play is for learning and how they can set meaningful literacy opportunities within that context. That's not easy to do it well. We just focus on the actual sounds and names rather than the formation yes, as well. Yes. So do lots of gross yeah. motor, motor and yeah. fine yeah. motor, yes. continue the work from nursery yes. and therefore... Two staff were identified um, to undertake the review of the foundation stage curriculum along with um, our newly appointed foundation stage leader who was the, the existing nursery teacher. Well it isn't approaching it as one subject, it's looking at what we need to do and seeing how many different ways we can do that in. So we're doing a lot of personal social activities at the same time. You carry on where the last line stops. OK? There's a lot of speaking and listening, obviously. The writing comes into language and literacy. Number work comes into it, knowledge and understanding, just about everything comes into it, creative development as well. I think it could be a castle. Oh, it could be. Now, why do you think it could be a castle? Because the credits look like the castle. The oh, castle. right, the shape of the building. It looked like, oh, that shape a bit over there, that shape. Looks like a horsey shape. Oh, so you, would you like me to turn it round? Yeah. This shape here looks like a horse. Yeah. Oh, it does, doesn't it? I can it's see it well, now. Yeah. I will put some paper pieces on the carpet for you yeah. and you can write down what you can see. The successful foundation stage, most of all, is, is to create a real passion for learning with the children um, and to do that within a very language-rich environment, but also one that's really developing their independent skills and the, the structured learning that happens through play-based experiences, but also 
the children having that ownership of the learning. What did you think it was? A snowstorm. A snowstorm, and you've used. Well done. Stop. And you've done, you've tried joint writing as well. Aren't you clever? Laura found herself monitoring lessons in the foundation stage where it wasn't easy to find the teacher and where, inside and out, session by session, children place themselves on learning journeys with their own starting points and their own goals, some of them supporting speaking and listening, others supporting writing. What does the fox say to him, Chloe? Jump on my back. Jump on my back. Go on, make him go to the river then. Make him swim. And the fox says, what does the fox say next? Jump on my head. What's the fox say next? Jump on his nose. Jump on his nose. Go on then. <gasps> Go. Gobble, gobble, gobble. Whoa, there you are. Hard work is on the part of the staff. The children still regard it as fun. They don't regard it as working hard at all. They're just having a good time. They don't even realise that they're learning. They are still playing because the whole environment is so exciting. The activities are so stimulating. They are learning and they are learning at a rapid rate, but they don't realise that. We're just playing, they'll say. What have you been doing? Oh, we've been playing at this, playing at that. They're using their own initiative. They're making the decisions. They're involving their friends. And there's such a lot of cooperation that's going on and such a lot of learning. And it would be very wrong for us to stop in, step in and say, hang on, that's not in the planning. We value their, their ideas and their contributions. So I think you have to be flexible. As a head teacher, you need to be very clear about the literacy provision for the youngest children in your school. You need to look at how you then build on that um, across the rest of your key stages, because if you get it right there, then you minimise some of the issues that can happen later on in the school year. Oh, my. <laughs> There are very specific practical issues that the head teacher needs to address. They need to be clear about what is good communication language and literacy in early years. They need to be looking at the data to find out what it's telling those early years practitioners. I do, but you showed me. Have I showed you? What one was that? What's that one? This data comes from observational assessments throughout the foundation stage. Standing back, watching children and carefully noting their progress was an essential part of Erdington Hall's journey. No point in Rosie's shell. Just talk to Mr. Let's have a go, see if he's right. Shell. The observations across the reception year were being collated to form the foundation stage profile, which has communication, language and literacy as one of its central pillars. So it was by analysing data on pupil performance that Erdington Hall began to build a picture of the new success that Laura and the team had been planning for. Linking sounds and letters and writing was very low at the end of Foundation 04 and in 05. So we, we had a real need that was coming up through the data, um, end of key stages, end of Foundation, but also in a, the data for each year group. What else would you say has had an impact on the linking sounds and letters this year? Uh, they can try out their letters, not just on a piece of paper. They can do it in the sun, they can do it in foam, in glitter. The linking sounds and letters and the writing, which were our two major focus, uh, have improved significantly. Um, and already by the end of the spring term, the attainment um, in the foundation stage was higher than that at the end of the year for the last couple of years. We're at 58% mm -hmm. at the moment now. So that is a dramatic improvement. Yes, again, 25% yeah. at the end of the foundation stage last year, 58% at the end of the spring term this yeah. year, and we'd expect more children to actually achieve six or more by the end of, of this term, the summer yes. term. So again, the work that's been done in the writing has had a, a significant has, impact. Yes. 
if personal, social and emotional education is right, then other learning will follow. So it follows that that's true of communication, language and literacy as well. Angry. Angry. Can you show me an angry face? I think head teachers need to look closely at the interlinked nature, if you like, of, of the six areas of learning. And personal, social and emotional is key to that. We're going to say to the person next to us what their name is and why we're pleased they're in our class. Ethan, I'd like you in my class because you do skipping with me. Oh. I'm glad you were here in this class because you talk every day to me. If they're still very diffident, lacking in confidence, if uh, they're still very shy, then it's a little bit harder and you've got to work harder to improve that so that they can learn in other areas. I think the two go together hand in hand. So it's initiatives within the play-based delivery of literacy that have had the greatest impact on standards. Otherwise. The Jolly Phonics we've had in place in nursery for some time and it's quite evident in, uh, amongst the nursery children of how well they pick up their letter sounds using the phonics approach and how much they enjoy doing it because it's fun, it's active and the children, have, they, they, it gives them hooks, so they've got something they can hook into to remember the letter sound. Grace is holding the blanket and the puppy is pulling it. And when it's pulling it, it's going... Can you do that? And it shakes its head like this. Can you do that? Pull the, pull the blanket. That's our special sound that we get to learn about. It's called an R, and it makes a... It was so successful, in fact, that we've introduced the phonics approach in year one, so that um, it started this year, and we can the children are already picking up and remembering letter sounds more effectively. I think it helps all children, because children of all languages are going to be reading in English at some stage or other, and it's going to help that reading development. You need to know the sounds before you can read. You need to know the sounds that you're going to read in English and the same in any other language. I think it's wrong to say you can't do it with children whose English is not their first language. May of this year we were re-inspected um, and the school was then given a satisfactory grading and removed from the underachieving category so we're very excited about that um, and even more so the foundation stage um, was given a good grading and the practice in the foundation stage was rated good uh, with some outstanding observed as well so, so we're thrilled. A good foundation stage is crucial because it's at that stage in children's lives where their attitudes to learning um, become embedded. And I think that um, you create a positive attitude to literacy and it's there for life. <laughs>